Well, hey there, guys, and welcome to our special review of Power Rangers. I'm going to be one of your uh, reviewers here today. My name is John Cabe, and I'm joined over here by Cobster. Cobster, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing very good. Very much excited. Uh, one of the most anticipated, this movie. So I'm very excited to get into it. And over here, Perry Nemiroff. I'm so happy we're finally here. After all this hype, I can't believe we're finally sitting here reviewing it. And you could probably tell by my face how I feel about it. Now, I saw Power Rangers a couple of days ago, but you guys saw it last night. Yes. At the premiere that we yeah. did, the fun mm -hmm. time. Oh, oh it was great. God. I mean, the original Power Rangers from all the way in the '90s were sitting right in front of us. A couple of fans are actually tweeting at us that we were in the background of the Green Rangers Facebook live chat, which was <laughs> really funny. A couple of really nice and awkward screenshots yeah, of the two of us, like, but it was uh, still great. Just, we had like the best yeah. seats in the house, dead center, close up, mm -hmm. right behind the original Mighty Morphin cast. Yeah. It was incredible. It was really cool. Well, guys, we're going to talk a little bit here. By the way, this is a non-spoilers review. I mean, how much is there to spoil yeah, with the nothing. Power Rangers? But this is a non-spoiler review. We're going to talk about the things we liked about the movie, maybe some of the things it could have done a little bit better, and uh, I will start this off. Now, um, I'm going to make everybody here very unhappy with me for a second, and that's okay. I can live with that, but it's important that I set the context. Everything about the original Mighty Morphin Power Rangers sucks. Uh, <laughs> it was not a good show. It was, uh, it was terrible and awful and cheesy and all that kind of stuff. Now, the reason I'm saying that is not to make you upset or mad at me, but I think it's important for me to say that so that you get some context of what I'm going to say next. I like this movie. I, I I didn't think I would like the movie, but you know the trailers came out. I said from day one I thought it was a bad idea to make this movie. I did. I said that, but then the trailers came out, and I, I couldn't lie. I liked them. I thought the trailers were good. I always said from the beginning, if you're going to make a Power Rangers movie, it's a terrible idea because the way they did those the, the original two Power Rangers movies. And I thought initially, I think a lot of us thought they were just going to fall in the same vein. But I said, if you're going to do a Power Rangers, movie, at least change it up. Give it a more modern context. Don't make it so cheesy soap opera ish -y. You know, make it a little more gritty and maybe feel a little bit more real at any rate. And the trailer seemed to suggest they were going to do that, and they did it. And for whatever reason, it worked for me. It had a little bit of a Breakfast Club vibe to it. Um, I actually liked the characters. I'm not going to lie and say there was a lot of character development, but I got attached to the characters. And this, this really is... You could excuse some filmmakers who thought a Power Rangers movie, let's just put on the bright colored costumes, have lots of explosions, but they didn't. They actually made this movie really about the characters, which I was shocked that they did it, but pleasantly shocked that they did it. Uh, I thought the cast all did a pretty solid job. For the most part, the effects worked, and where they didn't work, I have a sneaking suspicion they were done that way on purpose to feel a little bit more like the original show. Mm -hmm. And if that's what they did, good on them, because from a stylistic point of view, that probably worked. No, I really want to get to the fans of the Power Rangers here. <laughs> but just to say that, wow, I liked the Power Rangers movie. I thought it was pretty fun. Perry, let's go over to you. You've been really excited about this yeah. movie. What did you think? I've been really excited and really nervous. But you know what? This thing, it didn't only meet my expectation. It, it exceeded them by far actually and you know i didn't really go into this movie i i am a big mighty Morphin power rangers fan in case you already didn't know but i didn't go into it expecting to see a masterpiece all i've wanted is to be entertained to have fun and to like the characters and i got all that and i got a little bit more the balance between nostalgia in this movie and also making Power Rangers for a new generation or for people who didn't like the original mm. show, I think it's just the perfect balance of appeasing both sides of this. That cast was something else. Um, RJ Kyler, who plays the Blue Ranger, damn, he almost steals the entire movie. He was great. He is he great. so good. And, you know, I don't want to put down anybody else. He was definitely the standout. But Dacre Montgomery, who played the Red Ranger, he is someone probably to watch out for. Because, yes, he is playing that typical jock leader type character. But... Through his performance, he actually gives him layers and turns him into someone who I found really interesting and likable. And just the whole dilemma of him having to lead this team that isn't quite coming together. Naomi Scott, another one to watch out for. She had, we, I mean, we were talking about it last night, Copster. Mm -hmm. There's a couple lines in the movie that, you know, feel oh. super cheesy and young adult. But because they have really talented actors to sell that dialogue, it actually works, and it feels like a real conversation. And, you know, uh, Becky G and uh, Ludie Lynn did a good job, too. It just so happens that the others did kind of overshadow them. But damn, Rita Repulsa. Elizabeth Banks goes to, she takes it to like an 11 and I think it was actually I hear a lot of split decisions on her, whether or not, you know, someone thinks it was too much or or she felt like she came from a different movie. 
I feel like she was probably key to bringing the goofy nostalgia of the original series and this new kind of, you know, breakfast club, more grounded vibe. She pulls it all together because she is having so much fun in that role. She's just going to the extreme and it's scary too. Dean Israelite, the director, puts in a couple of really, I mean, horrifying jump scares mm. and just like the, the design of the character, but she made that role so damn entertaining. I mean, really, just everything came together. And even the, Z I, God, I'm going to go on and on. I'm sorry. Um, the Zords, because the Zords, every single time we saw them in a trailer or we saw them in a poster, they were a little obscure. And some of, some of the animals and the dinosaurs they were meant to represent didn't quite come through clearly. Perfect example of something working really well that I didn't expect to work really well in the final feature because they all looked incredible. The suits were great and damn, Dean Israelite directed the crap out of this movie. This movie, because most of the times when you have a popular film, when you have a popular franchise that is then adapted into something that's, you know, meant to uh, churn out another new popular film franchise, you know, it, it feels it feels a little, I don't know, if stale or just like it feels very similar to any other film franchise out there. This movie has his his um, his expressivity, if I guess if you could say that, all over it. Just the camera movements, the way he directs his actors, the way he shoots it, the color palette. This is his Power Rangers movie, and I think that's why it's so special. You know, the Jason character. An interesting thing is, you know, you have what could be the the prototypical just stupid jock character, and there's a very quick scene that happens in that when we see a part of the scene in the trailer, you know, they're in the detention hall thing. Uh, when Jason first shows up to the detention hall, there's a key scene that happens that instantly gets me on board mm -hmm. with the character. You know what I'm talking oh, about. Yeah. Anyway, cops, what about you? What are some of the things that really stood out to you that on the positive side of this film? Um, look, I look at this movie because I grew up like you. I grew up with the Power Rangers. I watched probably all the way to Power Rangers Galaxy. Yes, they actually go to space at one point, um, uh, which is a lot of fun. And I like that show because it's cheesy and corny. And, you know, it's a lot of nostalgia as well. And going into this film, I was very much looking forward to that. I, I It was it was either going to go either like they were going to go very serious or they were going to go the cheesy route. And then they found a nice little middle ground. It was a lot more grounded than I was expecting it to be. But I mean, that's totally fine because I look at this movie kind of how I look at the first Hunger Games movie where I liked everything leading up to the Hunger Games and when they got to the Hunger Games I thought it was just cool same thing here when they were just getting together learning how to be a team I loved all that and then when they got to actually be the Power Rangers I thought okay this is fine this is cool there's a couple great moments there's one moment in particular that made me tear up a little bit that that was complete nostalgia I didn't think they were gonna do it they did it it was great um, but everything else when they're actually fighting and stuff I, I like some of it they threw in a couple like because that's all that show was was just hand movements and ah, you know they're all their all their yells that they do and I and I really appreciated that they did that I just wish there was a little bit more of that like I said I like the build-up to that like, because the camaraderie and the and the relationship between all the Rangers was something we didn't get in the TV show because in the TV show you just throw five kids in there and then they automatically start fighting so this first movie is kind of like the pilot episode just extended like almost literally because they actually fight Goldar in the pilot episode as well so um, and on all, all aspects and I actually liked how the Zords were actually fighting individually because you didn't really see that that much and then when they finally morphed into the giant Megazord it was cool it was it was serviceable um, there was just a couple of moments where you know they, they threw in some things that I'm not a fan just of movies in general with like pop cult, like, you know, the most trendy songs that are going on right now. But uh, uh, for the most part, it's it's a pretty solid movie. And uh, I was expecting, oh, I was hoping for a little bit more. I really wanted to love it, but I liked it a lot. Yeah. You know, it's funny because one of the big key points of conversation surrounding this movie right now is the Rita Repulsa. You know, and some people, I had this conversation with one of the guys coming out of theater, is that, you know, like she goes way over the top. It's like, you can say she goes way over the top, but she ain't nothing compared to the Rita in the original series. No. Yeah, power me! <laughs> like, this was, this was really reeled in compared to that. And I actually ended up liking the Elizabeth Banks portrayal of Rita. I will, I will acknowledge, though, for some people who are criticizing it, is that, you know, they decided to go with a different tone and a different feel for this movie than the original series. Certainly, they threw in moments, so to pay homage to the original series. Mm -hmm. But by going that way with all the Rangers... Having the Rita character lean more towards the cheesiness 
did, I, I'll acknowledge, it made the, the Rita character feel a little bit out of step with the rest of the movie uh, when that was going on. I acknowledge that, but I still liked it. I still th thought that worked pretty well. But let's go over to you on this one, Perry. Like, what are some things that maybe didn't quite work for you, or maybe they could have done a little bit better? We were actually just talking about it. One in particular is a spoiler. There's a couple plot holes in this movie where it almost feels like they skip a beat, yeah. and mm -hmm. they need a reasoning to have had something happen to particular characters, and that does not exist. So. For those of you who, who have seen, we're talking about the shipyard. That's all mm -hmm. I'm going to say. Okay. We're talking about the shipyard. That in particular, there's a couple a couple of beats elsewhere where, you know, I would have liked a little more, but, you know, to backtrack, one of my favorite things about this movie was the pace and the momentum yeah. and how much I love the characters. And when you have those three key components, it's really easy to kind of gloss over those kinds of story flaws that would have bogged me down in other movies because... As long as you care about the characters, you could be surprised with what you get away with. And in that moment in particular, what that moment then leads to works so damn well that I stopped caring that that one particular plot point was missing. But, I mean, really, I, I don't have too much to complain about. I mean, just going back to what I said at the beginning, this isn't some sort of like masterpiece that's going to change the game in cinema and, you know, 90s adaptations. I don't think it's going to spark a craze and we're going to see every, you know, nine, goofy 90s show like this being adapted, but th this is pr it's pretty much what I wanted mm -hmm. and to touch on the music, the only concern I have with the music is that, you know, a couple years down the line, maybe those songs won't have the same effect, but it goes back to the, the energy. And it's like when those songs and those beats hit at a particular moment, they just push the movie forward with such momentum that I think they're used, ex they're just ex used exceptionally well in this case. But, you know, mo most of my complaints, I think, have to do with plot points, most of which are spoilers, but again, I'm, nothing that kind of ruined the movie for me at all. I really, I got what I wanted. You know, one of the things that could have gone really south in this movie was Zordon. Zordon mm -hmm. could have gone really south. Mm -hmm. And right from the beginning of this movie, I loved the setup of Zordon. Yeah. And I actually really liked the way they used him. And honestly, that has nothing to do with Brian Cranston. I mean, I, I think Brian Cranston did great in it. You can mm -hmm. tell he kind of embraced it and, and went all out with it. But really, just the plan they had for Zordon, I think, worked out. I cannot say the same for Alpha. Aww. Alpha yeah. didn't work for me. Uh, Alpha was as lame and as stupid as uh, everything else. Uh, he was the Jar Jar Binks um, oh, of, no. of this movie. No, he really was. And that's no, no fault to Bill Hader or <clears throat> anything like that. It's just, what do you do with him? I mean, yeah. really. I mean, I, if I was the director of this film, I don't know what I would have done mm -hmm. different. I might have just not had Alpha in there, which would have pissed some people off at first, I know. I just wouldn't have had him um, in there at all. The other thing that bothered me with this film is that there were a few, going back to the Jar Jar Binks analogy, there were a few moments. You know how in the original Star Wars movies, like Jar Jar Binks accidentally takes out the bad guys? Mm -hmm. Whether it's, you know, he's got the gun strapped to his foot. Oh, no! And he's, like, running around, and he's shooting all the droids and all the, the accidental heroics. There were a few moments in this movie of accidental heroism that that kind of stuff always irks me and bothers me um i do think as i mentioned before they could have reeled i liked rita the way she was but i but again i do think they th think they could have reeled her back even just a little bit more just to have her more in tune with the rest of the film up to a certain point but those are the biggest gripes i've got i mean that's that's as far as i can go as far as the things that i just think flat out didn't work for them i even like the soundtrack um, I actually, and honestly, there's a remake of a song that plays during the end credits uh, yeah. that I yeah. thought, oh, this is dumb. And then I listened to it a few seconds, I'm like, I really like this. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that's me. What are some things that maybe didn't work for you, Kyle? Um, I'm actually going to agree with you about Zordon and Alpha 5. I Because Alpha 5 is is Alpha 5 in the show. <laughs> yeah. But it, they, it, Alpha was just flat in this movie. I didn't I didn't really hate him or, or love him either because I, I actually, before the movie was going, they were, they were doing interviews and stuff, and they actually said that Alpha 5 was a lot more sarcastic and a little bit harder on the Rangers, and then they had to redo everything, and they, they completely, he had to re-record the entire movie. So I, I'm wondering, because Zordon's really hard on the Rangers in this movie, I'm wondering if, you know, two heads kind of getting really hard on the Rangers was a bit too much. I would have liked to have seen him a lot more sarcastic. I think that would have been a lot more fitting for him. But, you know, along with the music, like the original, Power Rangers movie. They had, had there were some pretty cheesy songs in that movie too. So it, it is fitting. I did forgive him. There's a couple of moments where the songs are implemented into it where I can be like, oh, okay, I okay, that's that's fine. But actually, the action for me, uh, the Zord fight action was great. 
just the actual Power Rangers fighting, they did the whole slow motion, fast, speed up sort of thing that I just, I've seen too many times and I don't like it as much. Luckily, they didn't do it too many times. I just would have liked to have seen them, you know, some real choreography. There was some in there, but I just, I wanted to see more of that. Um, but other than that, for the most part, it's a very solid movie and I enjoyed pretty much everything else about it. All right, so let's wrap this Ooh. thing up here. Just a quick summation, Perry, and oh, your man. score out of 10. I, I am absolutely delighted by this movie. I think it's a movie for the fans. It's a movie for newcomers. You know, it's got a lot of competition this weekend when it opens at the box office. I really hope that people give it a chance. It makes enough money because this is a film franchise. We get so many things like this where studios try to start a new thing and it's like, it's goofy. It's based on pre-existing material and it just, you know, it, it turns into kind of like nonsense and just because it makes money for one reason or another, this is something that really deserves to make money and I'm not just saying that because I'm a super fan of the original. This deserves to continue on. They actually started it with really great characters that have layers to them that are likable. They've created wonderful costumes. I mean, if De Dean is really continues with this franchise, I really think that it could be something special, not along the lines of something that comes to mind is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which kind of fizzled out and I don't think really lived up to its potential, but I want this movie to hit theaters this week and I want people to embrace it. I want newcomers to start to appreciate Power Rangers. So, oh man. I think I'm giving this, I'm going 8.7 out of 10. Uh, pleasantly surprised. It was far better than I thought it would be. Uh, it was, now I don't think this is a movie for everybody. This will not be a movie for everybody. Uh, so, you know, judge to your own taste. You know, you've seen the trailers, you make the decision for yourself. All I can say is I was, an, I was a naysayer of this film. I walked in. I enjoyed I think they hit all the beats that they needed to. I think they struck some chords that'll resonate with the original fans. And on that level, I, I, I think it worked. And I like the film. I'm going to give it, for me, 6.5 is a solid score. And I'm going to give it a 6.5. Uh, I, I really liked it as well. Um, I, I, I like what they did with the mythology. They switched it up a little bit, but not too much. I mean, the mythology in the original, is it's nothing that you know crazy anyway. So, but uh, I like what they did with the characters, the build up to actually being the Power Rangers. And then when they're the Power Rangers themselves, there's fun and there's nice moments. I think fans of the original show are really going to appreciate because there is some care into this movie. It doesn't feel like they just, like you were saying, they just threw on the costumes and did bright colors and did all these things. It felt like they actually cared about this movie. So if I were to score this, uh, I'm going to have 6.7. 6.7, 6 all right. Well, that'll do it for our quick review of Power Rangers. Have you seen the film? If you have, jump into the comments section and let us know what you thought of Power Rangers. That'll do it for us, guys. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.